All right, good day, everyone. And um, into this class, I want to welcome you to today's class. Um, if you were in the last class, can you indicate by raising up your hands? Okay, thank you, Joel. Joel. Okay, we just have Joel only from the last class. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, since it's just Joel in the class, I won't um, I won't go into so much of what we discussed of of the assignment. Okay. Mm, okay. Let's let's do something on that. So in the last class, we we let me just do a quick recap. In the last class, we had. Uh, We have to talk about um, the historical and modern government, and we progressed. We're able to exploit the various forms of government there are, and we're able to also find the differences in these types of government um we moved to um we did some exercises trying to identify the various kind of um, um practice what kind of government system is practiced in some of the countries um that we have today <clears throat> um and we're able to exploit countries like china china i mean canada China, Germany, Iran, Mexico, Mexico, Netherlands, Russia, Saudi Arabia. And of course, we compared um, those various forms of government and system of government to that practice here in the US. And we also, like I said, we did a lot of exercises and we yeah so here we talked about the good the bad and the ugly uh, about yeah the good the bad and the ugly in relation to these various forms of government so just for for those of you who are joining today uh there are various kinds of government and these various type of government had evolved over time right and um Oligarchy, we said oligarchy is a form of government. Monarchy, only a uh, dictatorship, democracy is a form of government. And oligarchy is where power is held by a small group of people who are known as elites or, um, um, you know, powerful, group of powerful people who come together to rule the country. Okay? So we we also talked about um, monarchy. So in a monarchy, power is held by a king, a queen, an emperor, or an empress. Okay, and you can have traditional traditional monarchy or constitutional monarchy. Okay, so and uh, countries that practice constitutional monarchy are like England, where you have the king and yet you have a democratic system in that country okay then you have you have dictatorship you have dictatorship dictatorship is where a single leader has absolute power where a single leader has absolute power and controls political social and economic aspect of the country so that dictatorship and um then we we discussed democracy we talked about the two forms of democracy democracy the direct democracy and the indirect democracy and i let i told you last time in the last class that indirect democracy is also called republic yeah it's also called a republic okay 
Cyprus and uh, is, is a former republic where um, where power is, is, is not hereditary or monarchical, right? Where you have um, elected, where heads of state or heads of government are elected by voters <laughs> in democracy as well. You have citizens exercising their power directly through representatives and which can be direct or um, uh, uh, in, in, indirectly, okay? So then you have totalitarianism. And if you can see my screen, you can see the good, the bad, and the ugly about that. Okay, so we're going to answer a few questions. Um, that was, this was the assignment giving. So we're going to read the passage and then we answer the questions. Okay, so who can help us read now? Who would help us with the passage? Anybody? I need someone who would help us read so that we can answer the question and go to the topic of today. Any volunteers? Joel, could you help us? Yes, I can read, but you have to zoom in for me, please, because I can't see it's too small. Okay, all right. I'll just I'll do just that. Okay. Thank okay. You. okay. Is it better now? No. Okay. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, you can do that from your end. You can just in okay. Yeah, you can do that from your end. Okay, I will try. Okay, I read. From this view of the subject, it may be concluded that a pure democracy by which I mean is associate is a society consisting of a small number of citizens who assemble and administer the government in person can admit of no cure for the mischief of faction. A common passion or interest will in almost every case be failed by a majority of the whole. And this is nothing to check. I can see that to check. The inducements. To check the inducement to sacrifice the weaker party or an agnosious individual. Hence, it is that such democracy have ever been spectacle of turbulence and contention, have even been found incompatible with personal security or the right of property and have in general been a short in their life as they have been violent in their death. A, rep a republic by which I mean a government in which the shame of representation, representation take place, open a different prospect and promise the cure for which we are seeking. The two great points of difference between a democracy and a republic are first, the delegation of the government in the letter to a small number of citizens elected by the rest. Secondly, the greater number of citizens and greater shame of country over which the letter may be extended. Thank you. Thank you very much. You really tried in the reading. I must commend you. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. so 
Yeah. So I want someone else to read the question one so we can answer. Okay, so in social studies before, um, and I, I ask any other person who can volunteer, in social studies, you must understand that in reading any passage, you always have questions like this. And in dealing with questions like this is what we call comprehension. You must deduce, or I say, you must try to understand what the passage is saying as sometimes it takes you being able to truly understand what uh, the passage is trying to communicate the message the intention and you know there are many things that can be insinuated okay from the passage so it's important that beyond that you have read you pay attention to what is the message of the text and in most of most social studies questions you are going to get passages to read and then answer the questions based on the passages so this is an example of such questions all right where you you'll be given a passage to read and sometimes you'll be given a diagram probably the map of the us probably a a graph for you to solve and all of that so these are typical um social studies questions so you must have the ability to to um, understand the passage that is why i would always ask students to read okay so that you get to um, hear yourself um, out and see how you answer the question okay so i will call on the next person who else is going to read for us who is going to go for us come on let's let's have volunteers simin can you help question one Hello. Well, what defines a Republican form of government according to the Madison? Yes. So what defines a Republican form of government according to Madison? So answer that question for us. Oh, that's true. I forgot. It seems some of you didn't um, went in the last class. All right, except um, Joel. So what I will do now is I want you to to um, screenshot this assignment. You're going to get to read it in, in your own time and answer those questions yourself. When we come to the next class, we're going to do it together. Please, I beg you, I don't want to see another set of people again in the next class as it will help it will make me want to go back to you know um revert or revise what i've been taught earlier okay so um i will leave this for you that will help you one of the things you are going to okay it's fine simin it's fine all right um okay so i'll please um i pull to everyone next week Please make sure that you are available for class. Make sure you join the class. I don't want to keep going back and forth. Okay. So, um, okay. It, is the class going to be on here or on Zoom? No, it's going to be here. It's going to be here. Okay. Yeah, I'll also send the link again. So, let's make sure we're in class. So, um, take the screenshot, answer the questions. When you come to class next um, week, we're going to start from here. Right. So let me quickly go. Let me quickly go to the class of today, so I don't take much of our time, because I just have one hour. I'll be having another class in the next few minutes, so I don't waste our time. So today, we are going to be looking at um, the basic principles of the American constitutional democracy. All right. Um, please, it's important you understand democracy. So if you have not been in my previous classes where I discussed um, America, where I discussed, I gave a brief history of America, if you've been in the previous class where I talked about the historical and modern um, and government, then it means you need to go on your own and research those things, get to know the types of 
and form some government, get to really understand how um, American constitution, I mean, American, I mean, American democracy, how did it evolve? Okay, you need to get to know all of those things. All right, so a brief, a brief, um, a brief kind of history here. So the founders of the American political system drew inspiration from the various principles, including um, the natural rights, popular sovereignty, natural right written in the Enlightenment philosophy of the 17th and 18th centuries. Okay, and their position was that individuals inherently possesses certain rights by virtue of being human. These rights, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, are the declaration are not granted by rulers or laws, but are considered absolute and irrevocable. The declaration of independence echoes this principle by proclaiming that people are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Now, what is the English I've been speaking? It's just um, important for you to understand that the American constitutional democracy is rooted in natural rights and popular sovereignty. It is rooted in um, the enlightenment of um, the philosophy of the 17th and 18th century, yeah, where people that, ha that, that has the position that people has their rights. And that is why America is considered the country of the free, yeah. The America is considered the country of the free because um, the here here in America there is this um, respect for human rights. There is high and lofty respect and regard for human rights, and these rights are, are are supposed to you know um, be the driving force of the american system the respect for life the respect respect for liberty and the pursuit of happiness this is fundamental to the constitutional democracy in america okay so um today we're going to be exploring what are the basic principles and it's, it's, it's important for me to explain what principles are okay you have a table Okay, if you if you have a table, your table could have um, four legs. That is four legs of your table. Yeah, those four legs of your table are what keeps the table standing. So if you happen to remove one of those legs, it means that the table may lose its balance. Okay, so also the American constitutional democracy has its or has what it called the foundation upon which this democracy is built, okay? So that's what we call principle. When we call principle, we are talking about foundations, we are talking about pillars, we are talking about um, the, the first element of, the, of anything. It's called principle, okay? So um, in, in, in a nutshell, we are, we are exploring today the fundamental elements of the American constitutional democracy. This fundament, these fundamental elements are important for you to understand. If you don't understand them, you won't be able to really grasp what um, constitutional democracy is about and why there is so much ado about it and why it is a, it is a, a crucial element in, you know, to the American society, all right? So uh, some of these is number one, you have natural rights, All right? We have, okay, let's start with popular sovereignty. So in popular sovereignty, all right, it is, it has to do with government powers come from the consent of the government. All right, the fact that the fact that the consent for governance, the consent to be governed, comes from the people. All right, come from the governed. 
I repeat again, government's power comes from the governed. That is the principle of popular sovereignty. Number one is that government's power comes from the consent of the governed. So if, um, how I put it, doing elections, the people are the ones, the majority are the ones who vote in, the majority are the ones who vote in their government and hereby giving their government the power to rule, the power to govern. So that is why in the principle of popular sovereignty, we we'll say that the people, the governed, okay, gives consent. Government's power comes from the consent of the governed. Number two, people subject to government decisions have the right to influence those decisions. So if the government wants to make a decision, the people have the right to influence. The word influence means, okay, go ahead, ask your question. Um, where are you reading from? Okay, I'm explaining. I'm explaining. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm explaining. <laughs> I'm not tied, I'm not um tied to the slide. The slide is for you, it's for you to interact with. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so popular sovereignty is under foundational concept cons contributing to American democracy. According to the principle, the government derives its power from the consent of the government. So this is me trying to explain. All right, but you can, you can take screenshots and read on your own later on. So this is just for you, okay? Uh, okay. All right, so um, I'm just trying to explain. All right, so number one, one thing, the things you should note about popular sovereignty is the fact that government powers come from the consent of the governed. Government powers come from the consent of the governed. I repeat. It has to do with the fact that government has no power if not elected. Yeah, it is the people who give them consent to be ruled. Yeah, so that means power is with the people. In democracy, power lies with the people. Okay, and that is why democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Okay, so if you underline the different time people appeared. You see that people almost appeared in every system, in every process of governance, okay? So, and it is not just minority of the people, but the majority of the people. That is why it is called popular sovereignty. The word popular sovereignty has to do with the fact that it is the number of people. It is the, um, the government themselves, not the few people who are government, who are government not the few elected people, but the popular people, popular um, other people who are, who are called the governed. Of course, you know that government is made, of few, made up of few people and then the governed is made up of a larger population. So the consent, the power of the government, which is the few people who has power, who have been elected into office to, to lead, their power come from the consent of the majority who are called the governed. I hope that is clear. So we move to the second, under popular sovereignty, understand that people subject to government decisions also have the right to influence the decision. So if the government comes out tomorrow and say, okay, we want to, we want to, we want to tax everybody five dollars, right, or ten dollars, um, and the majority says no, all right, the, the, the majority can influence the decision, the e eventual decision of the government. So you can, that is why you see some of them come out to protest, some, some of them go out to the TV and begin to tell you, say, no, we're not going to accept this and all of that. And then they compel the government to change their mind from what they want to do. So that's what we call the fact that, that we call popular sovereignty, the fact that people have the the people subject to the government decisions also have the right to influence those decisions they can determine to what extent those decisions um will be impacted or will be made and lastly in popular sovereignty we basic the basic of american government 
is the basis of American government after the Revolutionary War, right? So the basis of the American government after the war has to do with absolute respect for popular opinions, have absolute respect for popular decisions, have absolute respect for popular sovereignty, okay? So if the majority of people in the country are clamoring for something, the government have the responsibility to listen to them. So that's what we mean by popular sovereignty, all right? So the government reflects the will of the governed, all right? Because they are actually representing the people, okay? So since they are representing the people, they reflect the will of the governed. All right, so quickly to the second, to the second, all right? We have the fact that um, the one of the basic principles of American um, constitutional democracy is what we call constitutionalism. Constitutionalism, just like the name implies, it has to do with the constitution. Yeah, it has to do with the constitution. It blends the limited government and the rule of law and rule of law. So, of course, the fact that it's called constitutional democracy means that there is a law, all right? There is a law in place. And the fact that in a democracy, the government are limited. Yeah, the government are limited to what they can do because you have um, separation of power, the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, they have separation of power. So a particular arm of government, all arms of government are limited. So they have their limits as it reflects in the constitution, all right? So power is specified, power is constrained by the law, all right? So that means there is a blend of limited government and the rule of law. So in a constitutional democracy, the, the rule of law is precedent. That is to say, the rule of law is, is higher. And that is why it is said that nobody is above the law. Yes, please, you can go ahead and speak. Um, does that deals with like checks and balance? Exactly, check and balances. Yes, check and balances. So when you talk okay. check and balances, yeah, check and balances are talking about the, the, the specification and the constrainment of power by the law, okay? okay? So the law stipulates what the executive can do. The law stipulates what the judiciary and the legislature can do, okay? okay. So the concept, of, the concept of constitutionalism, okay, is emphasizing that government powers are necessary but limited to protect citizens. They're very important, all right? So government powers are spelled out and restricted to protect citizens' rights. So neither citizens nor government official can break the laws or violate the constitution. So it is summarized in this statement. Nobody is above the law. Nobody is above the law. So both the government and the citizens are under the law. So the constitution is every other person is under the constitution unless it is amended. So as once the constitution is amended and passed and adopted, the constitution becomes the supreme law of the land. Both the government and, and the, the governed are under the constitution. So that's what constitutionalism means. So it is a basic principle in the American democracy. It's a very basic principle. So there's a, there is a there is what we call the American Constitution, and it's a very important document when it comes to the government of when it comes to the government or come to the nation called the United States of America. So here the constitution is supreme. That's all we're saying here. So I have mentioned two things. I've mentioned number one, popular sovereignty, and I've come to the to the fact where I talked about um, constitutionalism which has to do with the fact that every action of the, of the government and every action of the citizens are, 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 are regulated by what is in the constitution.
Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next basic principle of democracy is what we call the majority rule. The majority rule. Yeah, you may have heard of it. Um, it's in the election for countries who run a parliamentary system. I don't know the system you run in your country, but over here, okay, where you have the legislature and you have um, um, elections and all of that, there's what we call the majority rule, okay? Now, this majority rule is actually based on, on the consent of the governed, okay? Yeah, this is where, uh, how would I put it, where there is a recognition of the fact that um, majority, the majority may want to abuse the minority, okay? Yeah, you know, democracy is, of course, the rule of the majority in respect to the minority, because in an election, you have those with the highest votes coming into power and those in the with the minor vote or with the with the lower vote you know staying at the opposition so the majority and minority rule brings a balance to democracy in such a way and in such a manner that the majority does not abuse their power okay and the minority is given opportunity to as well have a say in the decisions of government. I hope I'm making sense. Okay, so one, decisions are made by a majority vote of participating individuals. So if they want to build a road, if there's a decision to build a road or a, a, a phone park, and then they come to parliament and they decided, oh, okay, so um, how many of you will want us to build a road? And you have um, two thirds, two thirds of the whole parliament voting for a road and the remaining one third then voting for a fund pack, right? Yeah, so the decision those who voted for the road have it, yes, but the right of the minority are self-guided, okay? The right of the minority are self-guided. The Bill of Rights, I think I explained that in one of the classes, that's the last two classes, so probably I might, um, I, would, I would explain it in some other class so that we don't um, get it, um, so we don't get confused right so the bill of rights is part of what i'm talking about but it's a different um, document um, entirely all right so but we're still in the same in the same conversation so the decision are made by majority vote of participating individuals prevent abuse is prevented so the majority cannot abuse their power okay so they cannot, the majority cannot abuse their power because there are rules and laws on ground to ensure that minority rights are also self-guided after often through the Bill of Rights. So that's why I told you that the Bill of Rights is still part of what I'm saying. We have it as a separate discussion, okay? The Bill of Rights. Just like um, you have in some countries um, like the US, you have um, the majority, um, you go to some countries where the majority are of one religion, but that does not mean that other religion does not have the right to also practice their religion. So this is the delicate balance in a democracy. So the majority and minority rule is a balance in the democratic system that ensures that both the popular uh, or um, both the popular people or both the majority of persons are not abusing the minority. Just um, that is just what I want you to um, take home. Okay. All right. So we'll move to the next. 
So far, if you have any question, can I see your hand up so I can answer a few questions? I don't just want to move too fast. If you have any question, any question? No, I got it. All right, all right. Anybody else? Okay, so I'm I'm going to I'm going to talk about the natural rights. I said it at the beginning, but I didn't dedicate a slide for it. So I'm just going to talk about the natural right. Then I'll come back to the I'll come back to federalism. Okay, now um, when we talk about natural rights, we are talking about a few things. We are talking about um, we are talking about about those rights you are born with, natural rights. So just to just to check if you understand what I mean by natural rights, I want to ask everyone to tell me um, what are those natural rights you feel that every human being, irrespective of race, irrespective of religion, irrespective of nationality, that every human being is born with. What are those rights? I mentioned it earlier. So those of you who were earlier in class could mention. Yeah. I'm waiting. Okay, what are those rights we are born with? What are the, what are those rights you have? Um, the right to vote. The right to what? Vote. The right to vote. Okay. Uh, the, the, every human being, every human being does not have the right to vote. Those in prison does not have the right to vote. Oh. And some some children also don't have the right to. In some countries, um, if you are not out of the certain age um, age range or age limits you can't vote so but what are those human rights that those basic human rights in that every human being small or big rich or poor irrespective of mission or language or or, or religion that you have that is respected in any way you go like uh yeah. insurance for health health insurance Okay, somebody said life insurance on health. Okay, any other person? Any other person? Okay, let me see those I have here. I just have um, Chrisania and Joel answering my questions. We are the rest. What's happening? Roseanne? Can you talk? Can you tell us are those rights? Are you talking about me? Yes, please. What are those human rights? Um, normally the right to live, the right to express, the right yeah. to. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. you. You're saying it all. Thank you very much. That was good. So, the right to live. Every human being has the right to live. Yeah? Every human being has the right to live. Every human being has the right to expression. They have the right to live. They have the right to expression. Okay, because um, of time, I will say that yes. So, natural rights are basic principles of the American constitutional democracy. Remember, I began by saying that um, um, the US, here in the US, you, you, you talk about the fact that um, it's a land of liberty, it's a land of freedom, it's a land of, um, it's a land of, um, of, 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 of happiness, a, life, a land where you're free to pursue your happiness, okay? And that's because there's a, 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 a res there's respect for human rights. There's respect for natural rights. Okay? The, the belief system and enshrined in the constitution, enshrined in our democracy, is the 
respect for the inherent rights, okay, that are not granted by rulers. These rights are not the ones that the government say you have, no. They're not the rights that the law say you have. They are human rights. They are the top of the food chain. Yeah, so the right to life, the right to expression, the right to to um, to to your beliefs, yes, the right to your beliefs. So in an anarchy, in a dictatorship, you find out that some of the things that make a dictatorship um, different from a free state is the encroachment into the human rights. So any government that encroaches into the fundamental human rights has begin to, you know, elope to um, a state of dictatorship, a state of, yeah, a state of dictatorship where the government or whoever is in charge is in absolute control of the social, political, and religious life of the people. Okay, so the natural rights are derived from nature. They are absolute, they are not revocable. They are absolute, they are not revocable. So wherever you go in the, U in the US, there is a respect for human rights, okay? It is natural, it is absolute, it is irrevocable. It is, it is and not revocable, right? So, and these principles or this philosophy was, um, was gotten from the 17th and 18th century philosophers like John Locke, okay? They, they this concept, all right? So, um, um, major, major, major rights in the constitutional democracy, American constitutional democracy is the right to life, the right to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All right, so I think that is understood. So, so far, we have discussed natural rights, number one, as a basic principle of American constitutional democracy. Number two, we discussed popular sovereignty, popular sovereignty as a basic um, principle for constitutional democracy. Number three, we discussed constitutionalism as a basic principle of democracy. And number four, we discussed majority rule, uh, majority and minority rule as the basic um, principle of constitutional democracy. Now number five, we are going to be discussing federalism as a basic principle of American constitutional democracy, okay? So federalism is another key principle. It's talked about the separation of power, all right, between the federal government and state government, yeah? So power is decentralized, okay? So the national power, the, 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 the national government has its power. The national government, which is also called the federal government, has its powers, and the state government has its powers separate from the national government, and there is a shared power, okay? There's a third colon, which is a shared power, which means both the national and the state has power in this, in the regard of this thing, in the regard of the things that are going to be mentioned. <clears throat> okay, so, if you look at my diagram, you are going to see the, the various things that the federal government has power over, okay, which the state government does not have power, all right? And I'm going to see those things that the state government has power uh, where the federal government does not have power. Now, this is, true, this is true federalism, true separation of, <clears throat> true decentralization of power such that the, the central government does not have all the power. Okay, that's what federalism is all about, all right? So the center is not, the center is not the all-powerful. Every state, Chicago, all right, um, Illinois, all right, all these places, they have their power. Uh, say you, you go to New York, you go to Texas, they all have their powers, right? Separate powers, okay? Then when you come to the federal government or the national government, you can see the list of powers. So let's look at the powers that the national the national government possess. Number one, the national government maintain military power. 
the national government maintains military power. All right. Number two, the national government has is the one that has the right to declare war. So the Texas, the, the Texas cannot declare war against um, another country. You know, it has it doesn't have that power. All right, is a national or federal power. Then the national power also have the national power includes um, the establishment of postal power. All right. The establishment of postal of postal um, systems yeah sorry postal systems then the third thing they set standard for weights and measures they set standard for weights and measures all right they protect copyrights and patents they protect copyrights and patents so let's quickly move over to the powers that the states have the state powers okay so if you go to the state powers number one you have they have the powers to their powers include establishing local governments they can establish local government they set up schools they regulate states commerce so if you are doing business in a particular state they regulate it and they make regulations for marriage right so that is why in some states Okay, I don't want to go into that, but there are some states that accept, you know, certain forms of marriage and some states that do not accept certain forms of marriage. That is because, you know, at the state level, they have the right to regulate um, marriage. And lastly, they have established and regulate corporations. So if you are establishing a business in any state in the U.S., you must understand that... Um, what is obtainable in one state may not be obtainable in another state because states have their various rules and regulation in establishing corporations or businesses. All right. So now these are the two powers. You have the national power and we have the state powers. Okay. But there are some powers that they share. They are called shared powers. And this includes the collection of taxes, collection of taxes. So Taxes are collected at the national level and also collected at the state level. All right. Um, the established court, you have the state established court and you have the national established court. When we begin to look at the systems of government where we structures and designs of US federal government, I think then we are going to look at separation of powers where we have the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. That's where you're going to find out that we have um courts that are under the state jurisdiction and courts that are under the national jurisdiction okay so the third thing that the the um the share the third thing that they share is the regulation of banks yeah regulate interstate commerce as well yeah so interstate commerce so if you if your company um is 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 doing business is doing business an interstate business then the both the both um, federal and state government has a say in the operation of a company so in borrowing money that shared powers providing for the general welfare of anyone they have shared powers and uh, the punishing of criminals so if, if, if anybody commits a crime both the state and the national powers has the right to arrest that person and though there are there are, there are crimes that you will commit and it will be under the national jurisdiction and there are crimes someone will commit and it will be a state state um it will be under the state jurisdiction but whatever the case the national and the state has power to punish criminals all right so i know you, you must have taken screenshots so you get to understand more about the shared power the exclusive power of the national and the exclusive power of the state and then the shared power okay now we we'll move quickly to the next slide so let me quickly round up by saying that federalism 
In federalism, there is a division of power between federal government and state government. Federal government has supreme power over national matters. State government controls issues not assigned to the federal government. So every other issue that the constitution did not assign to the federal government is controlled by the state government, all right? So, um, Tenth Amendment grants state powers not specifically given to the federal government. So, any anything that does not fall under the federal government is controlled by the state government. All right. Okay, so, this would be my um, exercise or and um, possibly assignment as well. Okay, so I will take your question if you have any right now. So I I call it a wrap. I'll be having another class very soon. So um, anybody with question, you can raise your hands or you can type into the chat box. So you can chat type into the chat box or mute your mic, raise your hand and mute your mic so I can I can give you the opportunity to ask your questions. Okay, so if you don't have questions for me, I'm going to have to ask you my questions aside what you have there. So what you have there is you can you can you can zoom you can zoom and screenshot, okay? Yeah, on your on your device, you can you can actually zoom my screen, um, so you can take screenshot of it, and that will be your practice question. Okay, then uh, so you don't have questions for me. So am I free to ask my question? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, there are there are five basic principles of American constitutional democracy. Five basic principles. All right. I want to hear. Um, you can give me two or three. Yeah. Answer on the chat box. At the chat box. Let me see you. I'm at the chat box now. Mention three basic principles. Three basic principles. Three basic principles. I'm waiting. Three basic principles of the American constitutional democracy. Yeah. Go to the chat box and type it in. Minority, mm, nah. Yes, constitutionalism, yes. Federalism, yes. Why is it just Christiania? I have hit, I have seven people on this call, so why is it just one person answering? You have to give it a try. Yeah, come on everyone. I have three more minutes and I need to I need to know you at least you are able to mention three basic um principles of the American constitution. Very, very important. Yeah. Constitutionalism, federalism by Cusano, yes. We still have three more that have not been mentioned. Yeah, I'm thinking about the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. You, are, you made a good try. I'm going to mention it before I go, but I really wish others would come in. Okay, Joel the rule of law, the separation of power, 
okay the separation of power comes under federalism yeah the the the, the separation of power comes under federalism then the rule of law comes under constitutionalism separation of power comes under federalism joel separation of power comes under federalism the rule of law comes under constitutionalism okay yeah so it's a blend constitutionalism is the blend of the limitedness of government the limitation of government and the rule of law yes thank you joel it's important to you communicate because it will help me correct you if there are things you are mixing up so why not give it a try check and balances check and balances are um are under federalism as well so instead of saying separation of power and check and balances you want just call it federalism yeah so yes you're right but you need to you need to give it the term so that you know where they fall under all right thank you joel that was good yeah so who else who else so Kushanian Joel is out of my book. I still have five more people in my book who hasn't said anything yet. Uh, they're probably mute. Okay, you can unmute. You can unmute and say something. You can unmute and say something. If you can't type, you can say something. Okay. I think I'll need to call it a wrap now. So there are five uh, major principles of American constitutional democracy that we discussed today. And number one is natural rights. Natural rights, okay? You can call it human rights, okay? Number two is popular sovereignty, popular sovereignty. Number three is constitutionalism. Number three is constitutionalism. Number four is majority minority rule that is me the minority and majority rule yeah and the fifth one is federalism okay so try to try to make your research try to read and by all means please attempt my question okay these are about five questions i have i have drafted out for you yeah and they are your ged practice questions so do well to um um zoom on it zoom in on it and screenshot then try to sort them in our next class i'm going to be asking you question based on the two exercises i've given to you today this and this so if you're if you're not at the beginning of the class, you can also zoom in on this and screenshot. Okay, so this is where we call it a wrap. I want to thank you for coming in to join me into this GED class, um, and I will see you all next week. Like I pleaded, please be in class next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah, do enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah.